hello welcome to the show tonight's all about growth hacking so we're going to be talking about growth hacking sprints on the show and I'm going to be explaining what growth hacking is how to have a growth hacking session for your business it's quite difficult to say growth hacking um, especially growth hacking sprints so we're going to be talking about all of that I'll be sharing an agenda with you and lots more besides so do stay tuned if you're thinking about how can you quickly, cost effectively and with reduced risk take your business to the next level uh, in 2023 and that's something that you're starting to think about then do stay tuned and I'll talk you through what growth hacking is, um, how to do a growth hacking sprint, I'll give you an agenda and I'll be answering your questions and things along the way so please do put your comments in the chat, um, I'll answer them all if you're watching on replay then or listening to the podcast uh, version of this, then I will be answering all your questions in the comments as well. So we will get on with everything and I'll be back just in one minute after this. This is the Idea Time Show, Idea Time Show with Dr. Joe North, helping facilitators expand their creativity, confidence and impact through the power of innovation in action. Gain confidence as a facilitator, confidence with the technology, and confidence with your content and event design. Tune in every week for practical tips, strategies, and interviews that will accelerate your personal and business success. And now, here's your host, Dr. Jo North. Well, a big welcome and thank you so much for joining me in this, in this show, which is all about growth hacking. And I'm going to be covering what growth hacking is, how it works, how to get started. I'll give you an example agenda for growth hacking sprints so that you can run your own. Or if you're going along to a growth hacking sprint, you can sort of know what to expect. I'll cover how to set up and deliver a growth hacking sprint for your business and how you can use that to accelerate your growth. Um, in the months and year ahead. And this means working smarter, avoiding burnout and building a more resilient business. And I'll also be giving you an invitation to join me for an online growth hacking sprint that I'll be running in January. So if you're thinking about how you grow your business, how you take it to the next level, this is something that you can use on your own if you want to just create a, a solo retreat with a cup of coffee and sit somewhere quietly, you can work through some of these activities and do some of the reading suggestions as well that I'll give you in this show. It's something you can get your team together and work through some of the activities as well as a team, or maybe you want to lead and facilitate a growth hacking sprint. So um, for any of those three things, if you're interested in, in any of those, then this is a show that um, I hope will really help you. And I'm looking forward to hearing your comments and thoughts and everything as we go on the way. Now, before we get into the detail, if you are interested in attending a growth hacking sprint online for your business to get you off to a flying start in the new year, I'm hosting one on Friday the 27th of January and that's online via Zoom. Um, it won't be like this, like a live show. It'll be a proper Zoom meeting, very, very interactive from half nine till half 12, and you can bring your team, so up to three people from your business. And that is um, an investment of 99 pounds, including VAT. And that is per business, not per person, which I think is a steal. And you'll be working on your business the entire session. So if you come as a team, you can work together as a team in that session. And you can book your business's place at the link um, BIT, dot ly slash growth hacking sprint and I'll put that link in the comments after the show um, but and I'll show it again towards the end as well. So let's get into growth hacking and um, just say what is it? So have you heard of growth hacking? Let me know. Maybe you've been involved in doing some and I'd love to hear your experiences as well. But my definition of growth hacking is that it's an approach that helps businesses to scale by combining powerful data, technical expertise, and marketing flair to find and test promising new ways of driving growth. Now, it's not about hacking in the sense of the too good to be true, sort of slightly seedy um, shortcut definition of hacking, and um, hacking in a good way. So hacking originally means using data uh, to find new insights so that you can do really good stuff, a bit like a hackathon, you know, that, that sense of hacking. Um, so what it means here is 
finding creative, low-cost strategies to help um, you, your business, acquire and retain customers and test those strategies and learn really fast. And that's what we need to do. You know, the companies that, that uh, are doing well are the ones that are really finding out what's changing, reading the market, um, learning from what customers want, and then adapting the offer really quickly uh, to, to make that work. And there's a book that sort of really sort of started all of this talk about growth hacking. I've got my copy um, here, actually, which is um, Hacking Growth by Sean ha um, Ellis, who's the founder of growthhackers.com and Morgan, Morgan Brown, the co-author. And in that book is a whole methodology for how to do growth hacking. Now, the book doesn't tell you how to do a growth hacking sprint. That's not what it's about. But it walks through um, how growth hacking came about. It's used in tech companies, companies like Dropbox, um, Facebook and others. And obviously those tech companies have lots of great data on what customers are doing or not doing. And it's about how you tap into that, bring teams together, um, learn from that and then try things out. Try experiments, see how they go. And however those experiments go, then that informs the next thing that you do and the next thing so that you're learning. You've got you're on a continuous learning curve. So that's what the methodology is. And it reminds me a little bit of, do you remember lean thinking um, in the 1980s when that first came out? Some of you may, some of you may not, um, might be new to you. Well, lean thinking is a methodology that was used in car manufacturing, such as Toyota, and lots and lots of small improvements all stacking up to make a really big difference overall. And that methodology is still used in the automotive manufacturing and other manufacturing sectors, pharmaceuticals, many, many others today. And it's expanded out into different industries. So although um, growth hacking started and originated in tech businesses, it's really relevant to any type of business. Any type of business can take the principles of the methodology, apply them to, to what they're doing and get uh, good results from it as well. Now there are nine core ideas in uh, growth hacking and in the book Hacking Growth. Um, the first one is about using cross uh, disciplinary teams, collaborating with strong leadership to get results. So the idea that actually marketing or growth or sales doesn't sit within one part of the business only and they do all of that. It's about bringing you know, production, um, design, operations, sales, marketing, all of those, finance, all of those different parts of the business together to share wisdom and create the plan. The second core idea is that it's essential to have um, a really good understanding and knowledge of your customers if you want to have a must-have product. So growth hacking centers on having a product that people feel they must have. They really want it or they really need it. Um, it's something that they feel, you know, it was a really good investment that, they, that they've, um, they're that they spending their money on. So a must-have product is essential. And to get that must-have product, it's important to know uh, and understand customers, of course. And then to identify the third uh, core idea is to identify key data metrics around that so that you can track your progress and see how well your activities are working. It's about um, developing new ideas and analysing and then ideating. That's the fourth core idea in the methodology. So um, analyse what the data is telling you and then create ideas in response to that analysis. And then the fifth core idea is that you rapidly test those. So you set up some really super fast experiments that you can do in four to six weeks. Um, you try some stuff. Uh, learn from it and then uh, decide what you're going to do next. So you're on that continuous improvement cycle all the way through. You're prioritizing what you're going to work on and you're testing it. The sixth core idea is about attracting customers through a message that really resonates, narrowing down your marketing channels. So knowing who your customers are, speaking directly to them, speaking directly to them in a way that's really compelling um, and resonates with their wants, needs, um, aspirations, and what they're what they're hoping for. The seventh core idea is making it easy for fans to become customers. So it's having a, a really clear offer, getting great engagement in the brand, and and therefore uh, making it super easy for people to uh, to join in and also purchase. So frictionless customer experience. You know, a really nice seamless customer journey. 
The eighth core idea uh, is about keeping customers loyal and active. It's not just about retention, it's keeping customers loyal by creating customer habits. So getting them to do things um, that mean constantly interacting, you know, giving them regular updates and new things to try. So always keeping customers engaged, never being complacent and always thinking about preempting what they might need next. And the ninth core idea is that when you understand your customers, you'll earn more from them. And all of this makes sense, doesn't it? It all stacks up. Uh, and what I, I like about the hacking growth methodology is it gives you a really nice, clear way of doing this. And, and in doing these things, uh, what we do as businesses is we serve our customers far better. So it's a win for the customer and it's a win for the business as well. And finally, three um, about the book, there are three growth levers. Uh, their acquisition, activation and retention. So we think about from an acquisition point of view, we really uh, look hard at how potential customers um, find the business and how they get in touch. How easy is it for them to um, locate you and, and connect with you? Secondly, activation is then about turning potential customers into paying customers or active engaged customers and looking at getting that conversion rate from people who are potential and interested through into actually doing business with us. And uh, the third growth lever, of course, retention. We've just been talking about that a little bit, haven't we? Is how do you keep your customers coming back or re-engaging and increasing their lifetime value? So nine key ideas, um, three growth levers go into the growth hacking methodology. And I'm talking about growth hacking sprints, of course, today. And a sprint, uh, you may have heard me speak about sprints before. I've got lots of videos and blogs on the bigbangpartnership.co.uk website. So do check those out if learning about sprints is something you're interested in. But a sprint um, started really with this book by Jake Knapp, uh, which is called Sprint, How to Solve Problems and Test New Ideas in Just Five Days from, from Google Ventures. And Sprint is a, a five-day methodology that goes from having um, you know, a problem, uh, creating a, a mission for the Sprint, all the way through to uh, early prototypes so that it can be tested uh, and, and moving through that process really quickly. So a growth hacking Sprint is putting this hacking growth methodology together with Sprint principles of working quickly and, and getting um, forward movement and working collaboratively together. So a growth hacking sprint then is a short focused event that gets all the right people in the physical or virtual room to collaborate on growth solutions for your business. And they're designed to get the very best collective creators, creativity and wisdom from everyone present in a really efficient, dynamic and creative way in a short space of time. So that's what a growth hacking sprint is. If you've got any questions on what is a growth hacking sprint, please let me know or on growth hacking. Um, I'd also love to know if it's something that you've been doing or trying in your business or have you never heard of it? Um, and, you know, you're just not sure what it is, but you, you know, and how are you planning your growth for 2023? So I would love to hear um, from you in the comments. If you would like to have your own growth hacking sprint, that you could do individually. You could sit there on your own, as I've said, with a cup of tea or coffee and, and sit there for some quiet time and work through this, you can do it. If you want to get a team together and work through these activities, you can do that as well. Or you might want to facilitate a growth hacking sprint for a team and you be the facilitator. So here is an example of um, one way that I might do a growth hacking sprint uh, to give you an idea. So the first stage, obviously, when you've welcomed everybody and introduced everybody's sort of got to know each other if they don't already and uh, settled in, uh, it's about sharing the sprint objectives. And I think it's really important that you go with some clear goals of things that you want to achieve out of the sprint. So you're looking at a time scale of round about two to three hours uh, maximum, so three hours maximum, two hours the shortest. Um, so to getting a really clear goal up front um, is important. You'd then work through what's driving uh, the business and what's slowing it down before thinking about how you can work through that um, to uh, identify some potential for the business to do better. So you map out the company and um, think about some how you might generate some ideas to improve, select the best ones and then move into designing a growth experiment um, before 
getting an action plan together and reviewing and doing the next steps. So there's quite a lot there. I'm going to break down each of those steps one by one and just give you some ideas for how that can work and um, so that you've got each one um, to start off with. So having worked out what your mission is, the first piece is to think about what are the business anchors and what are the business drivers. And I really like the sailboat technique for this. So essentially, if you imagine that where your business wants to be um, is the target, that's the island that you're trying, you know, the lovely island, tropical paradise that you're aiming to sail to. And you're on you're on your your boat on your on your boat, you're on your boat, your yacht. Um, there are forces that are driving you. You know, the wind is behind you, hopefully, the, the tide is going um, in the right direction. There are things propelling you forwards towards that growth. And then there are things that are keeping you um, back, that are holding you where you are, the anchors. So all you do is think about what are the things that are actually helping you to achieve business growth and put those maybe on some with some sticky notes or something else into the business drivers um, uh, section of your paper or your flip chart or your virtual whiteboard. And then think about what are the anchors, what are the things that are holding you back and just spend a bit of time um, brainstorming through that. And then the next bit is to take the work that you've done there. Hopefully you'll have lots and lots of lovely uh, sticky notes and things with lots of thoughts on. And you split them into three areas. So which of those sticky notes are connected with the acquisition um, part of your business? So the business that is about um, attracting new customers, attracting new prospects in and connecting with new people. Which of those sticky notes are about activation? So that's the bit where we're converting uh, potential new customers into actual customers. So which sticky notes are in that um, bucket, if you like, and which are to do with retention. So you think about what are the drivers for acquisition, activation and retention, and also the anchors for activation, acquisition and retention. So I hope this is making sense. Um, so you're just taking the work you've done before and then you're starting to sort uh, out your sticky notes into those three categories and then you'll be able to see really clearly um, what's working well and what isn't around each of those really important bits of your processes in, in your business and from there um, start to think well okay what are the things we want to improve now I really like to use this innovation question which is how might we um, and then finish finish the question so how might we um, improve you know, how, how many people we attract to the website or how might we um, make people uh, help people go from being uh, on our email list through to actually opening our emails that we send them. So those sorts of questions. So you would ask yourself how might we questions for each of the things that you've got um, on, the, on your acquisition, activation and retention sticky notes and you'd capture those possibly on more sticky notes. You can never, in my view, have enough sticky notes. Um, and all of these things you can do on flip charts, you can do them physically in the room with people, or you can do them, of course, virtually on whiteboards. Um, same activities, uh, just the medium changes. And I really like to think through the whole, um, particularly on the acquisition um, and activation, uh, as well as retention, but, but think through the whole cycle. So. Uh, are you are you putting out useful things that are interesting to people that are helpful in terms of the content, the social media, the coverage that you're giving? Um, does that lead people to your website? Have you got good thing lead magnets, which are things that people can um, get and access in exchange for an email address? So maybe some free things, some free resources, or or tips, or whatever. Um, are you capturing emails well? How, how well is your email list working for you? How well are you working with your email list? Um, and what are you sending people and how well are the things that you are putting out there um, converting into sales, for instance? And this doesn't have to be just an online version. That was an online version. Uh, you can look at it if you've got physical premises, um, shop or, or a store or a restaurant or something. You can think about the whole thing from people finding out about you, the experience they have and how you bring them back in again. Um, and you can think about this from a business to business point of view as well with relationships. So it's really about adapting this methodology for your business, but it is very, very adaptable. 
Okay, so what we've done so far is you've thought about what's um, driving the business forward, what's anchoring it, um, turning those things into uh, the, the categories of acquisition, activation and retention, and then thinking about how might you improve some of those areas using the how might we question. And when you've got those how might we questions, the next thing to do is to um, is to prioritise those that you think are the most interesting or important how might we questions and come up with ideas for things you can do. And I've got lots and lots of resources on ideas and brainstorming and so on. So again, I'll put uh, some links to those in the comments as well. But just have a look on uh, bigbangpartnership.co.uk and um, in the blog section. And there's, there's lots. You can search the blog for, for brainstorming or ideation, uh, creativity techniques and so on. There's lots there. So you come up with, with various ideas. And from those ideas, you're then going to... Uh, decide which ones are the best ideas and uh, prioritise those. So um, think about which ones you would want to really try out and do some experiments on. Because the great thing is about um, these experiments is you're going to do small things that you can test. They're not going to be a big risk to your business or very expensive. Um, things that you can test over four to six weeks so that you're getting some really quick feedback. Um, and then you can learn from them and then go again and go again and go again. So when you do your first growth hacking sprint, you're really starting this, this wonderful cycle of continuous um, improvement and continuous growth. And so come up with, with a, a range of experiments, as many experiments as you can think of. Um, give each experiment a name and an explanation. So it could be that you're going to um, split your email list and you're going to email this part of your list with an email that has one heading and this part of your list, an email that has another, and that's only going to be the difference and you're going to see um, how, you know, how that uh, differs from a response rate, opening rate, those sorts of things. So I'm just giving you an idea. This could be anything, of course. Um, what action steps do you need to take? What success criteria are you going to um, set for the experiment and how long do you think it will take? So, so you will have lots of different experiments that you've come up with to in response to your um, ideas for these how might we questions um, nice short low risk cost effective things that you can test and it is really important to have these things because sometimes if we just hold on to an idea we have an idea and we just think it and we do nothing with it um, we don't get any feedback and the only way we grow is to not to innovate in a vacuum it's to innovate and in a way where we put things out into the world in the right way and get feedback so that we can go again, and go again and go again. And that helps us to grow faster, smarter, uh, better and more sustainably. Um, so you'll have loads and loads of great ideas for different experiments and things that you can do. And then it's about prioritising those experiments and saying, OK, um, which ones are really going to serve as well and show us something really useful and be very interesting and which ones are a bit, yeah, okay, but but not so good. And I really like to use a matrix for this. So I've got all the experiments um, on sticky notes, uh, more sticky notes again, as I've said, you, you know, I really should have shares in 3M or something. I don't, unfortunately, uh, maybe I should think about it. But um, draw a grid. So you've got uh, impact on the horizontal axis so from low to high, and then you've got effort on the vertical axis from low to high. And obviously, if something is low effort and low priority, then it's, you know, it's all right, but not necessarily something you want to crack on with um, straight away. Um, if it is uh, high impact and low effort, that's a nice quick win. So that might be something you want to do and start work on. If it's high impact and high effort, that has potential to be a future star trial for your business. So it might still be worth considering and, and maybe you start to put the work in now so that you can reap the rewards later. It might just take a little bit longer than the quick wins. And if something is high effort and low impact, um, then obviously you want to park that. We don't want to be doing things that um, are going to cost us a load of time and effort and really aren't going to deliver results for us. So decide which categories your experiments fall into and then hopefully you will have some future stars and some quick wins that you can pick from 
to go forward and try for real uh, and see how you get on and just learn from them. And remember, you're not you're not doing experiments that are going to be really big and really expensive and really risky. You're doing small things that can tell you a whole heap of stuff that uh, you can learn from. And then when you've learned from that, you can go bigger and bigger and bigger um, from there, should you wish to do so. So start small and, and that's how you run a growth hacking sprint. Um, make sure everybody's really clear in terms of the next steps. And I would be booking in the next session uh, for your growth hacking sprint. So a follow-up, have a date in the diary where um, people are going to come back uh, maybe a week later having set up the experiment and then put some key points in, some milestones to bring the team together and see how it's all going and then have that, that final review at the end of the experiment where you look um, in detail at how it's gone, what you've learned and what you're going to do next. So I think it's a really brilliant time efficient process and it's a good team build. It gets people from across the business talking if you're doing it as a team event. And it only takes, you know, two and a half to three hours to run through these activities and gives you a flying start um, to, to your next growth curve. So I hope that's been really useful. I'd love to hear from you in terms of what you think, um, any questions, anything I can help you with at all. If you would like me, um, if you'd like to join me for the live growth hacking sprint that I'm running um, online on Zoom on the 27th of January, that's a Friday in 2023, from half nine in the morning till half 12, um, then you can bring your team. It's £99, including that VAT, uh, including the VAT for up to three people from your business. So that's not £99 each, that's £99 for all of you. And you'll have um, all that time to work on your business uh, together. Um, and I really hope you can join me. The link to find out more and to book is uh, bit.ly forward slash growth hacking sprint. And I hope to see you there. I hope that's been useful. But until next time, bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Idea Time Show, brought to you by Dr. Jo North. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and access more completely free resources at bigbangpartnership.co.uk forward slash resources. We'll see you next time.